it can do when it's it's equipped with worship. <laughs> and and the enemy defeated themselves. They they fought and killed each other in the confusion. Worship <laughs> creates confusion in the enemy's camp. And we can do that today. Let's create Amen. confusion Amen. in the enemy's Amen. camp. Yes, and, uh, and and Amen. let him fight amongst himself Amen. and destroy himself. <laughs> Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, thank you. Lord, let our worship be a sweet yes. sound to you, Father. Let it be uh, just a reality of our inward lives towards you, Father. Mm. Lord, we uh, we yes. worship, Father, in, in, in our private places, and then when we gather in corporate yes. setting, Father, it's just an extension Praise of that God. time. Yes, Lord, Lord, Father, help everybody go deep, including myself, Lord. Let us be Most solely be focused on you, Lord, so that Praise this time God. of worship, Father, will not be polluted with any outside thinking or yes. anything that doesn't is not relevant to just seeking your face Lord, Amen. and being low in, in humility father Amen. lord you're so gracious to us and we can never stop praising you lord our, our hearts uh, our hearts cry out lord continuously father and and, and bless Amen. you because you loved us first Amen. hallelujah father you unraveled us You unravel me with the melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies. Till all my fears are gone, and I'm no longer a slave I am a child. like when our condemnation belonged to us. 
before you came and delivered us from Why that. Did we ever keep and that, yeah, it's like the weight of the world was just on our shoulders, Lord, because we were really? stubborn. A stubborn yes, foe, and Lord, you broke us, and we were, yeah, we were like wild ponies, Lord, unuseful to the yeah. to the cowboy. Until Lord, you broke us, Father, and uh, Lord, what a great life it is in you. Mm, we can sing of your love forever, Lord. Mm.
Oh, make a joyful noise. Absolutely. because he's kind of funny sometimes but uh, today he was he was very serious he said uh, there there are two things that uh, people believers or even non-believers lie about all the time wow. <laughs> intentionally <Wow. laughs> uh, and, and he says one one this is the second one it's, it's the second in line I'll give you the first one later but the second one is how are you doing today? <laughs> how are you doing today? And the answer to that, the answer to that is, is generally fine. Fine has a wide definition, doesn't it? Very broad. Very broad definition, and generally doesn't define fine, <laughs> as the word is spoken. And this, the first one is even greater. And uh, it's, it's, it's trespassed more often than the other. And it's when we sign contracts and it says, you, I agree to this. Oh, okay. And have you read all the blue, all the print, oh, okay. the fine print? Yeah. And then do you agree to it? And people just sign things. Sure. They, they, they don't even agree to it. They've never even <clears throat> read all the content yeah. of it. Yeah. And, and he said, the same thing goes for God's word. Absolutely. Wow. When they read God's word, they don't they don't really read the fine print. Jesus. Just thought I'd throw that in there during the read it to know it or to understand it. Jesus. Shame is a prison. As cruel as a grave. Shame is a rock.
Somebody comes to get some food, they're gonna instead of giving them a can of beans, they're gonna fill full lead. Uh -huh. yeah. Is that the prepper mentality? Jesus. Nope. Makes about as much sense as is nothing. It's like, it's like what if somebody Jesus. come to raid your house and they're gonna take your food, oh, they're gonna threaten you with heaven by taking your life. Boy, that's a, that's gonna be a real bad threat now, ain't it? Not to me. We have no fear. We exalt you. You have no fear if you're in God's will and center God's will, and, and you have that confidence, which we all do. That's right. There's no fear. It's uh, it's amazing because when that moment comes, His Holy Spirit will be glorified because we can't do it. That's right. But He can. So everybody says, "Well, yeah, when that when that fateful day comes, where I'll have to uh, we'll have to give up my life for my testimony for Jesus, so I'm going to be able to do that." No, you won't. You won't. 
you'll say at that moment you'll say holy spirit i need you to do this for me because you've done this whole life that's for right. me that's right that's right i can't boast in anything apart from you Not living anything. your uh, the christian life in and through Nothing. me by the power of your holy spirit i don't i don't make it i don't do it just like if it came down to us having to uh, give up our life for christ we can't do it but the holy spirit can and he'll get the glory because when he does it for us yep in and through us when yeah, we go into right. in the presence of Jesus, we say, thank you, Lord, I couldn't thank have done that. Yeah, that's right. I couldn't have done that. No, no way. So it's, it's like, I know from whence my help comes. That's right. You know, and, and I'll brag and boast on him and him alone. Yeah, my life, right. I can't go out on the balcony of my life and say, look at the kingdom I built. I'll be eating grass <laughs> out in at Pastor yeah. Kim's yard before the service. I mean, come on, really? With the roosters. Exactly. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy stuff. You know, um, so so we have a mighty king and a mighty, a mighty savior in Jesus. Amen. And I tell you what, um, we spend our whole lives bragging about him once we get to know him. We go like, man, he's an awesome father. Uh, he also is. It's just, yeah, it's like, wow. Like, so we're going to, I think we've got time for this last song here. Um, yeah, so we're going to slow it down and just uh, do something real reverent. I guess they're all real reverent anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing worth more will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. In your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of love. Heart becomes free, my shame is undone. <clears throat> In your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come find this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory.
we sing, Lord, uh, Lord, you're welcome here. Not only welcome, but Father, we expect you here. It's okay for us to come expecting. Lord, you say to come in, in your presence with boldness, Lord. Yeah. Father, because you say it pleases you when people, it displeases you if people were to come to you without faith. Lord, Father, we come before you, Lord, and uh, increase our faith uh, this morning. Lord, every time we gather together, we ask, Lord, that you would always continually increase our faith, Lord, until that final day where we don't, where you're the author and finisher of it, Lord, so that we see you face to face, and when we're in heaven, it's complete. That's right. So the value of a lifetime, Lord yeah. Father, is a, is a timeline stretched to infinity if we have only 70, 80, or even 100 years to live out a life of faith. What is that in light of eternity, Lord? Amen. What is that small amount of time in life in the life of eternity? How valuable is a life that we can experience faith? Because in that timeline of infinity, if, if you were to look at a measly hundred years of it, it would be like such a microscopic yes. dot. Yes. And we'll never need never need to have faith again because when we're in the presence of the Lord that faith will Come be on, finished. We'll see yeah. him as he is. Complete. Yeah. And so so we got this amazing, amazing time in our lives that, that only happened one time. Amen. And uh, it's precious. Precious is, is the faith of the little yeah. children. Lord, we, we ask that you bless the word, Father. It goes out, Lord, and whoever's going to preach it. But we, we ask, Father, that we'd all be uh, uh, aware, Lord, and not just aware, but, but attentive to the word where, where there won't be distractions. Father, that we'll be able to consume that word and that it'll, it'll uh, bring a fruit to our lives Amen. like it always Amen. does, Father. We can always, we can always count on that. Never returns boy in Jesus' That's name. Right. Thank Amen. you. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Vic and uh, Glenn. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Vic, for filling in today for Dennis. Could be that Dennis will be back with us next week. He's doing much better. <laughs> but I sure appreciate Vic. And, uh, great, great time of worship. Praise. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I'm so happy to have uh, David Dolvay with us. And, uh, you know, this man is just, you know, he, he carries an anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He's so sincere with God. He's, so, he's the real thing. He's the real deal. You know, he, he walks his talk. And... Um, it's just been a, a, a pleasure to, to know him for a number of years. And, uh, um, you know, we were just talking Tuesday night about, uh, you know, you sh Jesus said you shall know them by their fruits. Right. Amen. You know, um, and, uh, you know, he didn't say by their gifts no, necessarily, right? That's right. right? You know, um, but fruit, character, speaks so much louder than even gifts. Oh, yeah. And this is why Jesus, well, Paul, said in 1 Corinthians 13, you know, and he, and he, you know, he said, you know, seek earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show unto you a more excellent way, mm -hmm. a more perfect way. Amen. And that way is love, because love is character. Mm -hmm. Love is the fruit of the Spirit. And, um, and I, I just thank Dave for coming today and, and being with us. Yeah. And, you know, Dave, I <laughs> demonstration of the Holy Spirit is is I think his calling. Yeah. And um, it is. Um, I always think of what happened that time at the Chinese restaurant. I don't I don't know I don't know whether to tell about it. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a good testament. You know, um, I don't know there. There were probably 30 of us or so in, in that meeting, and <clears throat> and Dave began to operate in, in the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, and people began to go down under the power, and they were under the power, I mean, all over the room, and the room wasn't much bigger than this, and, and then it went out into the restaurant area, double doors in the back, 
and, and lo and behold, two people fell out under the power and went right out the door. And so, so they're, they're just laying out, you know, and um, I go, oh no, I better hurry and get back there real quick because the waitresses go right, right, that, right across that way to get to the uh, soda machines. And they're going to see these people laying there on the floor, and they may call the ambulance or something. I don't know what's going to happen, you know. So I, I hurry out there, you know, and and they're laying there, and sure enough, two waitresses come up, and they they're standing there. They're just looking at that. I said, Lord, what am I going to say, you know? So I guess he just gave me the words to say. I said, Don't worry about a thing. I said, Jesus is just loving on them. And they said, Oh, okay. And they step right over them and, and, and take care of their business, you know. But Dave, I thought, man, the Holy Spirit, he really has a great sense of humor, too. And uh, God is so good. But we treasure, we treasure his presence, don't we? Yes, we do. And uh, Dave, by, by um, occupation, is, uh, uh, works with wills and, and uh, setting up uh, state living living trusts and um, by the way my my mother passed away here a, a couple months or so ago and and my son wanted wanted our trust to be to be looked into both hers and, and mine and uh, so we had an attorney look over everything and and lo and behold they said that that, that trust you uh, wrote out for us is uh, Right on. There's nothing, nothing, nothing wrong, nothing wrong with it, Dave. So you passed with flying colors. So anyway, but he does living trust too. But most of all, he trust, he, he he teaches trust in the Holy Spirit yes, and uh, yielding our our lives to the Lord. Well, Dave, come on up and thanks for being with us today, brother. And uh, can we just give him a warm welcome? Yeah, today is the <laughs> <laughs> today is the red uh, the red and the black Bible. Yeah. You know this Bible had a long time and had a cover over it and it fell apart. Oh, and then we had a Bible guy uh, over at one of the churches came to town and I sent over to him and he put her back together yeah. and wow. he said, "Wow, that thing is in really great shape." Because somebody said, "What's your most prized <laughs> possession?" It's right here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is my most prized possession. This Bible. This Bible, not any no. Bible. Because no. this one's ready to go. <coughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I do. It's all marked up. You know, it's amazing. Jesus went to the fig tree. Yes. And this particular fig tree in this account is a fig tree that's out of season. <coughs> out of season. Out of season. So we're not supposed to expect a tree to produce fruit when it's out of season. So he cursed that thing because it had no fruit. Yep. Did you ever thought that? That's very interesting. Very interesting, right? Do you guys ever think about things like this? Yeah. Yes. It takes a, it takes a while. Until you, why, why would Jesus curse a fig tree that's out of season? It's not supposed to have fruit at this mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Wow. Do you know that we're supposed to be in season and out of season to preach the word of God he wants you to bear fruit and that fruit would remain so I was just telling that to somebody that that really kind of like blew their mind that's a good revelation there are other reasons why he cursed that fig tree probably for his disciples because what we say goes you know stuff like that so what a beautiful deal I'm coming off some great meetings I mean Things yes, are just really rolling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I got a call from somebody over in Oregon and went over, did a Women's of Globe meeting, and that thing was hopping. They came all the oh, way yeah. from Bakersfield. Wow. We had people, uh, I had, uh, I never seen anything like it. And <laughs> the power of God was so strong. Mm -hmm. It's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Yes, it should be. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I would say this that everybody in that room got slain in the Spirit. Amen. We saw miracles. Yeah. And it was just incredible. So the word, word got out quick. Mm -hmm. And then I, I got a call from this lady. And she goes, what would it take for you to get over to Beverly Hills? <laughs> Beverly Hills. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't know. What am I going to do over there? Well, come over there and teach and train us. 
teach and train. Hey, that sounds fun. Sounds a lot. So 20, 20 minutes later, they called, We're, you're booked, you're on the airplane. So I flew into Beverly Hills, get picked up in this beautiful car, go back to this mansion house in Beverly Hills on a hill. Whoa. I mean, this house is like, woo, these people really know how to do it. You know what I mean? We're mm -hmm. talking, yeah. woo. Yeah. You got the swimming pool. The, the guest home was brand new, run it by an app. I mean, I was the first one to break it in. Wow, and, God. Well, you know, it's just tennis court and swimming pool and a house. And yeah. We go out to a restaurant that uh, the elite go to, yeah. and they take your cell phone and they put tape over it so you can't take a picture and you can't talk to anybody because of Beyonce or yeah. Oprah or somebody yeah. come in. You know, you can't really do anything. So I'm sitting there watching all these young people. Man, where do these people get the money? They got a waiting list of 6,000 people to get in that place, and 6,000 people want to get into this place, right? It's like a restaurant. It's a buffet. Because they can go there, and the paparazzi can't get them. Nobody can get them. And oh, it's like, it's a hangout. Okay. Kids are in there, uh, young kids with kids, and I'm going, whoo, where's this money coming from? <laughs> anyway, I, I got a, a Dennis Thanos from Lodi, California. And Doug Cornwall, right? Cornwall. Cornwall. Yeah, welcome. Woohoo! From all the way from downtown Lodi. Lodi. <laughs> we got, we got Lodi. two Lodonians. <laughs> two two, two Lodonians. Yeah, yeah. Two Lodonians. Look at me. Yeah, resting my leg. Lodi. 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 Um, yeah, you know. It was pretty amazing training this 29 year old who's in yes. here of like, I mean, these people are worth like 400 million already. I mean, that's a lot of money. Well, then there were something. Salt? With the air on? No, the mic. We're talking, are we talking about the mic or the door? Door and air. Well, why are you interrupting the meeting over there? I'm talking to you. Rock, can you shut the door, please? This is also important. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bro. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, it was very interesting. So, I had a little fall in this house I was staying in, Medford, right? Because some of the floors were like this. And in the morning, I was going over this house to the shower, and I forgot there was a step, and then I crashed. And a good thing I my head went through the, the door, not the, uh -huh. the door jam. Boy, that would have been close. That would have oh, been yeah. Bad. yeah. And so I got up and told him I'm okay. And my lawyers will call you. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so bad, isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, I was uh, showing Tom, my Tom and Connie Wilson, my the yeah. people that hosted me. I was hanging onto a wall, and I came came right up to the step here, and I go. I can literally not step down with my right foot. I, I can't do it. I, I always have to go down with my left foot. I'm hanging onto the wall because I, I can't. I can't do it. I, I, I can't step down. It, my body won't let me. I'll, I'll just fall over. Mm -hmm. On the golf course, I never could pick up a golf ball off my right foot. I can't do anything with my right foot. Going down the stair, up the stair, it's really strange. And so uh, Tom goes, "Hey, Dave, come in the living room." because he already heard from God, mm -hmm. and he saw in the, the spirit realm a dagger stuck in my right hip. Oh, God. Yeah. A dagger. Whoa. Oh, go get rid of that. Yeah, yeah. So he did what, he, I, he's behind, boom, I'm slating the spirit. I'm, boom, I'm on the ground laughing. I got right up, up went right down the stairs with my right foot. And I could yeah. feel tingling and electricity shooting from my right side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So my hips, even when I was little, I couldn't Indian sit. So how long has this dagger been in my right hip? This really made me a little angry. Yeah. Because, you know, come on. I'm a Pentecostal preacher, charismatic, yeah. filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah. Go around getting people healed. And I got a dagger in me and I didn't even know it. Whoa. That didn't sit well with me. Thank God he got that dagger out. He saw something else over here. Yep. But I've been having some problems with my hips and you know things like that. And I go, God, what else is going on? Come on, body of Christ. We gotta come yes. together. Yes. yes. We gotta start seeing. Yes. Yes. We gotta start ministering yes. to each other. Yes. Yes. I mean, without Tom seeing that, how long am I gonna go with some stinking dagger stuck in me? Right. Well, exactly. Until somebody says it. There are seers. That's right. So I was teaching this young girl, I said, she goes, Well, Tom sees, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Well, we have seers. Yeah. 
and we have people that perceive. Right. It's really the same thing. Same thing. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Paul said, I perceive that you have faith to be healed. I perceive a lot of things with people. Yeah. I just come up, yeah. I perceive stuff. I'm really not seeing it in the realm, but I know yeah. something's there. Yeah. So I had this uh, one lady, and I, I called Tom up, and I Tom was standing in front of her, and I said, Tom, do you see it? He goes, I don't see it yet. You will. And I walked away. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, this miracle starts, to, because this lady had something being on the back of her Yep. Back of her neck, yep. and all of a sudden she he's working. He put a hand on there, and then all this lump starts to disintegrate in his hand, and the bones move. And all of a sudden, yep. she's it's a miracle. She yeah. healed, but it was a perception. Mm -hmm. That's why I said, "Do you see it?" Mm -hmm. I mean, we got seers. Seers see right. things, right? We do have seers. So, I think we're 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 missing some stuff. Because we really need to release the body of Christ on the body Come of Christ. On. Yes. yes. I mean, That's what we're I was telling, we were just talking to him on the phone coming up dentist night. And we were talking to Tom, and I go, I, I was sitting there telling him what was going on, and he got it in the morning. He saw the thing, and he was trying to figure out how he's going to tell a Pentecostal preacher that you've got some dagger stuck in you. Yeah. And where did that come from? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stinking, yeah. lying yeah. devil. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And we've got all kinds of things yeah. going on in the Christian realm, right? Yes. I was just with the doctor the day, and they're, they're, they're doing ascensions. Yeah. People are going to yeah. heaven, and yeah. one guy's met Smith Wigglesworth, and another guy's in the house of John. And I go, that's very interesting. Sure. You know, maybe we, I was also with the singles pastor the other day at our singles group, mm -hmm. and he was kind of not in a nice way interrogating, you know, trying to figure out what's going on with Pentecostal charismatic, because most of them are whacked. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they get around and they're whacked. They're whacked. And all of a sudden, I'm giving him these answers. He says, man, that's, that's, that's nice incredible. Question. And I, I, start, I start saying things to him, because I'm a guy with 25 years' experience of signs, wonders, and miracles, yeah. Yeah. And, and this stuff is real. And this is not a whacked-out deal. Yeah. I mean, I may well act a little whack. Maybe we I, I mean, I got kicked out of a church for being too charismatic. <laughs> I mean, I, they didn't kick me out. They just never invited me back. But I saw so many miracles. It was the most incredible incredible stuff. I was just a miracle after a miracle. Wow. Even the pastor got healed. But that day, all day, guys, too charismatic. Yeah. And I want to talk to you about charisma today. I want to talk to you That's about some word. things. Because... When you carry this anointing, the Greek word is charisma. Right. Oh, yeah. brother, you know, I, I'm not just not this. No, I'll tell you what. When you are anointed, you are going to move in charisma. You will. Yeah. You are going to move in charisma. And, it, well, I'm not like that. We're not talking about you. We're talking about the real you. Real. We're talking about a gift yeah. of the Holy Spirit Come called on. the anointing. Wow. And it comes from charisma. You could push it out. People are going to come toward you because of They're charisma. Drawn. So I was over in Walmart the other day. I thought I heard the Holy Spirit tell me to give this lady 20 bucks in front of me. Mm -hmm. So I handed it to her. She goes, oh, wow. What's it? Wow, 20 bucks. Yeah. I, she goes, what, I think I'm paying it for it. I think I'm hearing to give you this $20. Praise the Lord. And here's what she said. Yeah. Did you see me? Give the homeless guy over in the produce department twenty bucks, and I go, no, I did not see that. Wow. So you gave a guy twenty bucks, the homeless oh, guy, uh, you know, pushing a cart, you know, yeah, whatever. Beautiful. And she goes, yes. I said, well, this is definitely God. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> heard from God. So isn't this beautiful? You get your twenty back, yeah. and I get blessed because it's better to give than to receive. Yeah. Oh, always, always. I heard from the Holy Spirit. This is good. Yeah. It didn't take me long. Normally, I go, God, are you sure it's twenty bucks? <laughs> it could have been a hundred. <laughs> could have been a thousand. Could have been a million. No. Yeah. <clears throat> so then she goes, Wow. She goes, I'm fifty-seven years old. I go, Oh, okay. And then she goes, Man, you look really good. I go, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a little slow. And she goes, I got an aunt that's sixty, and she is beautiful. Beautiful blonde. Are you going to learn about it with her? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm reaching about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do that. Yeah. Here's my card. Have her call me. So she has not call. But I thought that was interesting. We're talking about charisma. We're talking about charisma. She saw that charisma. My aunt is 60 and she's beautiful. And you look good. You should go out with her. That's charisma. 
I looked in the mirror and I go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you saw. I, I see some charisma, but uh, you know. Somebody said, would you marry yourself? No. Nope. No. Nope. Not, <laughs> not this week. <laughs> so you're already married to Jesus. Yeah. Woo. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Already married. Thank you. So anyway, Beverly Hills was pretty cool. I mean, those people are hungry. I mean, you know. So I got a 29 year old spiritual daughter that has serious money. I mean, serious. These people have serious money. I mean, serious money. I don't know what serious money. Forty, four hundred, five hundred million. That's serious money. Not serious money. Say. That's some serious money. Yeah. Yeah. She's building a hotel over in in, in, in Mexico right now. <laughs> They're flying all over the place. That's serious money. Yeah. My first spiritual daughter, and she's rich. <laughs> That's a good way to start. That's a nice right? start. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Well, I'll tell you what, six hours worth of her just rearranging that religion in her. And you mm -hmm. can see the light bulb come on. Yeah. Let's talk about simplicity. I mean, really, what's going on? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, do, are we really in this thing? Are we really understanding the simplicity? Because in the singles group, some of these guys, the pastor's there, and you know they're trying to give ideas what we do in single, and I come back with Bible verses. Because you know what? A Bible verse is the best way out of anything. Yeah, that's right. yep. Many plans are in a man's mind, yep. but only the purpose of the Lord will stand. Yep. So what's your purpose? It better be in the Lord. Otherwise, you're not going to stand. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. So I think part of my deal now is to try to get people on the road of understanding simple things, making it plain and simple, and how to really function in this charisma, this anointing, and what this anointing will do for you and what it's going to do for the glory of God. So this is really about God, right? Right. So after the <coughs> meeting in Medford, um, I... I got some calls from other other people, and one of those says I was in that meeting, and she says we have never had a meeting like that. That was the best meeting we've ever had, ever, Wonderful. ever. Praise God. So that's a good sign. Ever, ever, ever. ever is a long time. You know, the pastor. I can quote this: the pastor from the Father's House, uh, Ferris Baker. I mean, they have worldwide ministries go through there, oh, yeah. but. One day he got up and he mm -hmm. said, we have seen more fruit and more miracles from releasing the fire than any other wow. ministry. Come on. So what does that really mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I thank God that thank one day you, I Jesus. just said, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. And skip the religion. Skip all the guys that tried to take credit for me. Oh, brother, you'll never make it unless you come under us. I can get you in all these churches. Oh, oh you come under me, we'll get you all over here. You know what? And then you got the millionaire guys coming. You know, oh, you know, what's that? Well, it's a car. It's an airplane. Here's, you know, all the, you know, they try to buy you out, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's get rid of that stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. I, I just came a different way. Yeah. We're not going to bow to anything or anybody. Nobody controls me. Hopefully, except the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because Stephen was filled with and controlled by the Holy Spirit. And that's where you yeah. want to be. So yeah. that should be our quest. That should be yeah. our destiny. Yeah. To get this anointing yeah. on us. Well, yeah. people say, well, I'm, I'm not, maybe I'm the head, maybe I'm the tail. You know what? As the occasion demands, come on. that unction will come on. Yeah. You. See, this anointing. See, the, the Holy Spirit will teach you and guide you into all truth. But we forget to realize that this anointing will teach you also concerning all things. The anointing will teach you concerning all things. Not some things, all things. That no man should even teach you. The anointing is what you should eat, sleep, drink, and breathe. Amen. What is that anointing going to do? It's going to set the captive free. Amen. Recover sight to the blind. Deliver the oppressed. Amen. Proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Amen. Yes. I mean, people, I don't know, people don't even study the anointing. And yeah. then we have the relation of the kingdom of God. So a dentist on the phone the other day he says, Brother, what's the only public message Jesus had? The kingdom of God. Amen. It's the only message that's, that works. Yeah. And it's amazing that Jesus, yeah. a man under the law, with working with Pharisees and talking to these people, would answer 
by the law, but he's always moving them one step further to see I'm bringing, I'm ushering in a new king. Mm -hmm. My ministry started in Galilee, and I'm preaching the good news of the kingdom of God. Yeah. Change the way you think. So we should be kingdom of God people. Come on. We should we be are. understanding this. And so I, I, I've been working on this a long time. I have a way of training people from the get-go and breaking these, these things that just don't work. These ideologies, philosophies. Oh, I heard Pastor so-and-so say it. Well, just because he said it, can he do it? Because you do oh, it. Yeah. See, it's, it's like the, the pastor at the singles group. I said, hey, Pastor. We can quote scriptures all day long, but sure. do they work? Yeah. Well, you you got to hear and understand that word. That means right. you go do it, because if you're not a doer of the That's word, right. there is a level of deception. Yeah. It, so we got people running around that are just decept deception. Yeah. Never lived the courts of heaven. We got this this theory, this deal, and, and, and people are over in Revelation. They're all over yeah. the place, and they can't even control their mouth. <clears throat> yeah. The rudder of your life, and they're off doing all these different studies, and you know, they're experts in it, right? And they can't even control the very things they need to control to let this anointing multiply. Peter said, "Grace and peace be multiplied." Multiplied. This is not added. No, My Father, I go down the road. Grace and peace be multiplied. I need it multiplied. Sure. Your tender loving kindness and mercy are new every week. I need that. Yeah. Yes. Man, I'll tell you what. I think <laughs> I think what we're asking for is that, you know, sometimes it's just like, wow, you get together with like in the singles group, we had a table and nobody knows any Bible verses. And then they want to get in a marriage. Oh my goodness, what are they dragging in? I want to drag in some biblical knowledge. A guy that has some self control. A guy that he's got yeah. his you know what I mean? Yes, I've got I fruit do. of the Spirit working on me so I can take into this relationship yep. so that I don't go get all squirrely all over the place. Come on. You, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, I do. So I was telling the pastor, Second Peter, I mean, it, it, it's, it says over here, if these things are not abounding in your life, you will be barren and unfruitful. How would you like to take barrenness and unfruitful into a new relationship? How would you like to take <laughs> that into your ministry? How would you like to take that to somebody? You've got nothing without the anointing. The anointing is everything. That's right. I mean, really? Even though I'm just not anointed. Well, let's get you anointed. Because the Bible says you are. Amen. So I, I think it's a way to change the way we think. You know, yesterday when Kim called me, uh, Kim, yeah, Kim, and I was thinking, God, what should we really do? Let's just, just talk to the people. Let's go back to some basics. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, come on. Oh, there's some really good stuff. Oh, yeah. There's some really good stuff. So a friend of mine came up to me. I was at a church. And he, oh, man, I heard this guy on the radio. I was thinking of you. Oh, really? What you hear? So, well, I don't, I don't really remember what it was, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> what time was it? It was like uh, 1030 on KCBC on Saturday. Oh, Really? You were listening to me? He goes, what? Yeah, you were listening to me. He goes, really? Yeah, that, that was my that was my program. Mm -hmm. Ten thirty. You, you heard me. That's why you. <coughs> he says it reminded me because it was me. <laughs> yeah. He was like shocked. He didn't know it was me. He didn't know. <laughs> oh man, he says I need to follow you. I'll be in a church up in Cameron Park this Sunday. You better be there. <laughs> he doesn't show up. <laughs> there was a kid in a wheelchair, all mangled up. He's over to my right, and I started to preach, and he's ooh, ooh, making all these loud noises. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm looking at the pastors for, is this normal? And they're not giving me anything. No I'm not getting help. No I'm not getting help. And so, you know, I keep on going, and he's loud, and he's loud, yeah. and he's loud. And then pretty soon he gets out of the chair, and he's in front of me. Yeah. I'm looking at the pastors. I'm trying to get a signal. Is this normal? I mean, he was really loud. It was almost like disrupting this meeting. And I go, God, you know, it's not so much that I want to get up here and flap my jaws, but what is going So I would just come over to him and slap him on the top of the head, you know, shuka. And then he'd go back preaching. Right. 
And then all of a sudden I see a couple ladies get up, intercessors. They know something's wrong. They know. Yeah, they're going to pray. Yeah. You know, they know something's wrong in this service. Now I know what's really going on. Because yeah. the intercessors leave them to pray for, for this meeting. Because something's not right. Nobody's taking care of it. And then all of a sudden the kid stands up and he's healed. Yeah. He's healed. He's healed. Yeah. healed. Yeah. Just from... <laughs> I think he got so excited about what I was talking about because you can bring this dimension of charisma That's right. and out of you, if we cast out a devil by the finger of God, yeah. surely go. the kingdom of God has come upon you. The yeah. kingdom of God is what you really need to study and you need to get that yeah. deep down in you because it is the only message to set the captive free. The and you are going to do it by the Holy Spirit and that anointing. Amen. People say, well, God does it every... No, it only comes by this. This is the bottom line. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the yes. Holy Spirit and power. Okay. These are the Holy Spirit. No, you need the Holy Spirit and you need the power. They are together. Yes. You can't do it just with the Holy Spirit alone. You need the Holy Spirit and power. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Who went about doing good. Do you want to do good? That's part of this business. Yeah. Do good. Healing all that are oppressed of the devil mm -hmm. for God was with him. God is with yeah. you. So this is a really deep message. It's yeah. so simple. But how many are really understanding this kingdom on the inside and the charisma that you carry because a rise shine for the glory of the Lord is going to rise on you. Right. Yeah. Come on. But the word arise has a very interesting oh, yes, definition. Yes. You must arise from the prostration of the things holding you back you must arise to the real life. Right. See, you can't right. get signs, wonders, and miracles unless you are in the real life. That's right. The glory of God is going to rise on those who can come over the prostration of life, the things right. that are holding you back. Yeah. Rising yeah. to the real life. Yeah. Jesus came and he said, I came that you might have life. Life. And yeah. that life more abundantly. Yeah. What's that mean? Well, you know, it's amazing. Jesus, anytime, even the, when the rich young ruler came to him, he yeah. says, what must I do to have eternal life? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know in English, eternal means we're talking about eternal life, or eternal zoe. Yeah. Zoe, life is life. two, two, two in the, in the Greek. It's the zoe force of God, the very deity. Nothing can live without the zoe force of God. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. It's God. It's the way. It's a beautiful deal. Yeah. So, Jesus finally says to find life. Yeah. You see, he's taking him from a dimension. Once you find Jesus, yeah. you have eternal life. Yeah. Eternal but life. there's something you're missing because you're down here on this earth right. and you're not living the abundant life, which is a supernatural life. I, I need am. you. I came. Amen. that you might have this supernatural life. Amen. That's where I need you. Yes. That's where I called you. Call That's why I have the disciples and I trained them uh -huh. so you can move in a kingdom anointing in a supernatural lifestyle. Super <laughs> That's right. Wow. Come on. Yeah. 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 That's right. yeah. Supernatural life. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. 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 I can hear the organ playing like a more <laughs> surreal. Da, 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 da. Oh, but well, that'd be great. Yeah. We need an organ player. <laughs> I could have a guy with a tin cup and a monkey going around for an offering. <laughs> so I think people are, are maybe branching out and we have we have a lot of stuff. I mean this is the big Bible. You've got a lot of stuff going on, right? Yeah. But do we really have that kingdom, and do we really understand it, and are we seeking it? So somebody said this the other day, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Added. Well, this is a beautiful Great verse, but, but let me say this to you. Uh, it's a one-time verse. And yeah. let, me, let me clarify. So once you get born again, guess what? Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is now what? Interesting. Interesting. Within you. So you don't have to seek for it anymore. You sure. know, right, where's that? Sure. Can you get any more righteous than what he's already imputed into you? Come on. No. So this is like, once you find the kingdom and you're seeking him mm -hmm. and his righteousness, now all these things can be added unto you. Sure. So I would clarify, and I would say it this way. 
Instead of using that verse like, hey, I've got to get the kingdom and more righteousness so that I can get things added to me, what I would say, why don't you translate this the way Jesus would say, now seeking my way of doing it first. Because now you have everything on the inside of you. We have to get it up upon you. And then you're going to move in this lifestyle that you are trying to live. Get out of the way. Seems so simple, right? Get out of the way. Yeah. What are the what are the things that are added unto you? I guess we could look. Uh, I guess we could look up the word things. I think it could be a lot of things. Could be. Let me just tell you this. Uh, well, not tell you. I can't tell you anything. Um, I was getting ready to do a very important meeting. It was a big meeting. Family Christian Center. You know. A lot of people. I'm going to teach in the Bible College. It's Friday morning. I'm going to be there at 4 o'clock in the afternoon to teach in the Bible College, and I'm going into this meeting. This is a big deal. And I've been praying for big deals like this. And so, 8 o'clock in the morning, oh God, what are we doing? 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I've got nothing. That is very strange. And finally, I go, God, what's up? He goes, there's a problem. A problem? What is it? Is it me? No. People are praying for the meeting. I go, is, isn't that good? He goes, no, they're, they're praying a myth. Uh -oh. They're praying a myth? Wow. Are you serious? I, 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 serious? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm like, serious? Serious. Yeah. He says, yeah, serious. He says, I want you to cancel this prayer. I cancel every prayer that everybody's praying for me right now, and I break it, and then, he, then immediately I got the message. Right. So I get over to the church, and the, the Holy Spirit says, that's the guy right there. I go, who are you? Oh, I'm ahead of the uh, the IHOP over here, and we've been praying and fasting for you for a week for this meeting. <laughs> I did not have the courage <laughs> to tell that man, whoever's been praying, totally not praying the will of God. Oh, my God. I had to cancel that. So we have good meeting Christians that will take their time out think they're doing us a favor, God a favor, yep. by praying and fasting for a meeting, and they're totally off. That blew my mind. God, yeah, that'll totally. How could this possibly How be? be? I mean, this is reality. Yeah. I was like shocked. Yeah, that wow. it's people are okay. well-meaning Christians. I mean, come on. They, they're just, they're fired up. They, 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 you know, they're into them. They're intercessors. Wow, that really opened my mind. That, that, that kind of just blew me away. Yeah. So this is the confidence we have. If we ask anything according to his will, and we know that he hears us, the very thing we've asked for will be granted unto us. So for some reason, we've got to be in the will of God, and, and that's the place where we've got to stay. Well, what is the will of God? The best place I know is to stay right in the solid scriptures, foundational scriptures, without getting out too weirdo, far out stuff. I mean, <laughs> Explain where. I, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know. So Kim and I were talking about some of this stuff. I mean, yeah. come on. Um, a lot of people are out there. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not saying that's, that's not good. No. It's just, I just stay in my bowling lane. I'm good at this. You know, let's bowl right down my lane. When I hear stuff, I go, well, I really, I don't know. I, that, that sounds good. I, I have no idea. I'm just going to stay out of that because I'm not so sure. I'm not a revelation expert. I'm not this expert. But I'm really good at this. So let's stay in the lane. I want you guys to stay in the lane of the kingdom of God because there isn't anything else that's really going to produce the fruit that you need. Amen. So even, even what happens over in Mark chapter uh, 4, it says, If a person does not understand the parable of the sower, how shall they understand any other parable? Well, I think that's, that's pretty cool. The parable of the sower is an amazing parable, and I've heard guys preach. There's many ways you can preach that. I mean, you can preach for months and weeks in there. You've got all these different soils, you've got all these things going on. But I think the important thing is any time a word of the kingdom comes, mm -hmm. yeah. then immediately Satan comes to snatch it out of your heart. Well, why is a word of the kingdom going to destroy the kingdom of darkness? Because a word of the kingdom really is a word that's living and active, 
yep. sharper than any two-edged sword, sure. piercing as the divisions, the soul and spirit, and joints and marrow, is able to judge the thoughts and the intentions of the heart, and nobody's hidden from his sight. So this is this is the message. This is the message Jesus brought. That's right. And then at the bottom it says, He who hears the word and understands it will bear fruit. Right. Some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. Yep. So if you hear it and you don't understand it, the devil's got you. He's going to take it. And you can't bear fruit unless you hear it and understand it. Right. So this is pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it is amazing. I mean, it's pretty basic. So I think you've got to dial it back and go, people, well, what's fruit? People contact. Yeah. People contact. Yeah. Hey, you can pray all day and be in the Holy Spirit, walk in the Spirit, live in the Spirit, whatever. Yeah. But the fruit is hitting the road yeah. and seeing yeah. God produce fruit in people's yeah. lives. Right. In other words, we're moving in with gifts of the Holy Spirit. And it is not like how God gifted Jesus Christ. Him. He anointed him. He anointed him. And I believe the gifts come out of this anointing. Yes, they do. They do. Jesus they do. just moved in all of that. And he did beautiful things. He lifted up his eyes. And in the Greek, that's the superimposition. That's a beautiful word. Over time, place, and order. In other words, he's looking over the natural into that supernatural where, where the signs, the wonders, the miracle, he's hearing from God, the God realm, the heavenly places. That's where you really hear this stuff. You're going to hear it in that realm. You can't hear it in a natural realm. You're hearing it on the inside in that heavenly place realm, yeah. but you have to be able to get into that realm. You lift yeah. up your eyes. And the eyes is... Well, that word eyes means that you're looking for something outrageous to happen. Because once you get in that realm, it's lightning, it's miracles, it's, yeah. it's like incredible. Yeah. What do you guys think? Am I putting you to sleep? No. No. Not at all. So I guess this is the mission. The mission is how can we get more people to realize that, you know, brother, I just, I'm just not that, I'm not, not a head, I'm a foot. Well, you know what, let me tell you something. If your foot is in a place where the occasion demands, then you're going to have to learn how to release an anointing. Because if God is telling you to do something and you don't have that, not able to get that function up, how are you going to manage this? And usually God is not going to ask you because he already knows that he can't depend on you because you just don't believe it yet. So people say, I've never got this, I've never had this, I've never... Well, the reason is, you got to... He's going to... He's got to really realize that he can trust you. Yeah. Yeah. you got to trust him. I mean, just like in the supermarket, just like all these places. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Let me just read this uh, verse out of the Amplified for you guys here. Yeah. And uh, this is a pretty cool verse. Got my amplifier. I got to get this Bible fixed. Yeah, I, I should have <laughs> got more word. I'm totally authorized. I told the ladies over in Minnesota. I'm, I'm totally authorized. I've been cross pollinated all over the world <laughs> by some of the strongest anointings in the world. Yes. I've had encounters with some of the best of them for the glory of God because I was hungry. Yeah. But I'm authorized. There's something on the inside of me that can be pushed out. <laughs> That's right. And you can catch it. I can catch it. And you can run with it. Run with it. And somebody says, well, how do you do that? He says, only you can get it from God at the appointed time of the Father. I remember Claudia Friesman being in a deal and my ex-wife Chris, who's a very lovely lady, she says, I want what you have. And he says, ask him. See, you can't get anything unless it comes from God. But we are releasers. Paul released on Timothy. Yes. You know, and, and yes. Moses released on Joshua. So we're carriers of the yes. divine message. Yes. We're carriers of a divine anointing. To loose the bonds of wickedness, undo oh, the heavy yes. yes. letting the press go, destroying every yoke. I mean, th- this is like amazing. Yes. And it, it can be caught. Yes. So there was a lady in Bedford. I came up to her, I'm probably going to pick on you. In this meeting, she goes, I'll pick back. I like that. <laughs> I like that. So, so I'm gonna come right, I'm gonna come right out of the shoot and I'm gonna get you. Yes, ma'am. Something's gonna happen to you in this meeting like you've never ha- happened before. Because this anointing that's on me is going to permeate you and you're gonna immediately start working in it. 
Yeah. Wow. Woo, right up there. Boom. And then, then she comes up to me and goes, boom, and I'm gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was laying in the spirit. She just, well, I was gone. Glory. It worked right away. Right. Oh, God, <laughs> Hallelujah. Sure. Man, she went out of there on fire. Yeah. But so it's the appointed time of the Father. Amen. It is, yes. But let me say it this way. The appointed time. Once somebody time. prays for you, that anointing is in a reservoir. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's cult in this. Yeah. And it's waiting until you can handle it. That's right. And then all of a sudden, guess what? <laughs> Boom, there it is. Yeah. Boom. He says, yeah. That's why I had that guy pray for you. Yeah. I know it was four years ago. But I've been waiting for you wow. to come up to speed mm -hmm. because I didn't have anybody else in the region that could impart into you what I had put into him because I knew you were going there to be there in four years. Are you guys hearing me? Oh, yeah. 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 Amen. I remember I, I, I had a vision of this kid. I'm, I'm going over to a church, and I had the pastor there. And I said, yeah, I had a vision of a kid. He's Mexican, about 13 years old, kind of stocky, about this tall. And in walks uh, a man with a, I said, that, that's a kid right there. That's the guy, kid I saw in the vision. This is before the service. And I said, who's that guy with him? That's the youth pastor. Who? So whenever the youth pastor, where'd you get this kid? I found him out on the streets. He's never been in a church. Whoa. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. So I told the pastor what's going to happen. So I bring the kid up at the beginning of the service. I realize this is the first time you're, you've ever been in a church, but something's going to happen to you. I had a vision of you. So this is going to be a God thing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for you. And there are gifts that are going to flow through me by the power of God. Amen. And they're going to go into you. And to know that you know this is really God, they're going to start moving in your stomach and you're going to feel them yeah. moving in your stomach. Yeah. That's the promise from God. Yeah. He goes, cool. I cool. just went. Because they're moving. They're moving. Yeah. yeah. Bingo. Totally <coughs> Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> so I go home and I go, God, a kid on the outside comes into the church for the first time. Yeah. You give me a vision of him. You're placing this stuff inside of him. Why did you use me? He says, the most powerful thing in the region at that time. Yeah. You see? Yeah. You never know. Like uh, we just, you just uh, Tom said, there might be some people driving five hours to get into my, one of my next meetings. Wow. Because that could be the divine counter that will literally change their life. Yeah. It Take them into a destiny, plan, and purpose. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm an assassin for God. Yeah. Amen. Yes, I know. I've seen it over and over. I know. It's a beautiful thing. I get glory to God for this. Come on, man. I, I mean, we're, we're all in this together. Really? I thank God that he saw the dagger. I would have, you know, like dagger. That's bad stuff. I don't like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Take yeah. the guy that shoots guns. Oh, man. Another dagger. You can use it to stop that. Mm. Listen to your purpose here. Mm -hmm. The purpose is that through the church, that's us, right? Mm -hmm. The complicated, many sided wisdom of God. God yeah. is a complicated God. His ways are higher than our ways. Oh, yeah. Complicated, many sided wisdom of God in all his infinite variety and innumerable aspects might now be made known to the angelic rulers and authorities and principalities and power in the heavenly sphere. It's our job to show hell that we are in control. Yes. Filled yes. with control yes. by the Holy yes. Spirit, working yes. in the kingdom of yes. God with the Holy Spirit yes. and power and a charisma anointing. Yes. Yes. Well, that's beautiful stuff. I love well, I just don't know if I'm going to be there. When that charisma hits you, you will go into charisma. Yeah. It's not you, it's the real you. Yeah, the right. real personality is going to come out. Right. People are going to be drawn to you. People, you ever seen somebody walk with charisma in a world of charisma? Ooh, wow, yeah. wow, you know that yeah. guy reaps some money. Yeah. Gets out of a car. They look good. You know, they walk good. It's a different. It's a worldly. But this charisma is a loving, caring. People of, like somebody told me just last night. <laughs> I've never told this to anybody. There's a reason mm -hmm. they're telling me. There's a reason they're telling me. Sure. It's a reason that this lady probably doesn't even totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? 
Mm -hmm. Most likely. There's a reason. Joy. Trust. Because when you walk in this charisma, right. it has trust. Yes. Because it has a different envelope. It has, a, it has an amazing fragrance of love. Yeah. It's a smile. You can get out of here. You're walking in charisma with a smile, not that real proud, like, look at me. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I walk in. Everybody look at me. You know, we're not smiling at them. It's all about me. I'm the guy with her. I drove in. I did. I did. I did. Yeah. But when in this charisma, it's him. It's him. He. He. For the glory yeah. of God. Yeah. Thank you for the gifting. Right. You walk in and you're smiling, but it's charisma. Yes. It's yes. charisma. Yes. People like that. Who are yeah, they? Sure. Why do you ask? Yeah. Who, are Who are they? It's usually what I came out of a coffee shop after Claudio Friesen laid hands on me for six times. You're only supposed to get in line once. And finally, the guy goes, you again? Boom! <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's pretty cool. So, but anyway, right at that meeting, I'm, we're about to lunch, I'm walking with this guy, and he's, we see this guy coming with a cane, right? I can watch this. I take five bucks out, I blow on it. And I go, watch this one. I hand this money to this guy. So he comes up and I put out five bucks. He goes, wow, yeah, this is for you. He grabs it and he touches it. Wow, that's, that's just really great. And then he gets this weird look on his face and he, he goes, I don't know who, who you are. He dropped the cane and ran. He was instantly healed. Yeah. He ran that way. Yeah. That guy's, the guy's running. He's terrified. Yeah. All of a sudden somebody hands him five bucks yeah. and he feels this jolt of power or whatever he felt. And yep. he's no longer crippled, and he, he runs away. He runs. He's in shock. Yep. That's the beauty of this charisma anointing. Yeah, That's the beauty of a transfer. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? A five dollar bill. That was worth five bucks. Yeah. I came out of a McDonald's one day, and I see these two kids. God said, "Give me each twenty bucks." God, these the kids on bicycles. That's forty bucks. Okay. So I go over to the kid, and I hand him twenty bucks, and he starts to stammer. Oh my God, I was just asking God if you're real. I, I need some money. And I heard it. And boom, he's like out under the power. <laughs> I hand the, the 20. I go, you're talking about 40 bucks for the kingdom. Yeah. Rock that guy in his sure, shop. Sure. That's amazing. Yeah, how inexpensive. Beautiful, isn't it? 40 bucks. That was a good deal. <laughs> that was a great deal. Through the church, the complicated, many-sided wisdom of God and its infinite <laughs> variety in innumerable aspects by being known to the angelic ruler. We're going to tell these guys and we're going to show them that we're in charge. Yes, we need to. Wow, come on, church. Yeah. We can do this. Come on. We can do this. Yeah. Yeah. How many of you are kind of enjoying this? Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems simple, but I think this is where we, we've got to end up, right? Let's go over to Mark 4.35. Let me t show you some shocking things here. Mark 4.35. I love this scripture. So, uh, uh, excuse me, 4.26. Mark 4.26. And he said, this is Jesus, the kingdom of God, that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah. Is if a man or woman, I put a woman there, should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow, he or she themselves does not know how. There you go. Yeah. You don't know how this works. Adam was placed in a garden that he had nothing to do with. He didn't know how it worked. His job was to tend and keep it and take dominion and all this stuff. So people think they, they sometimes they're praying for what what could you pray for? You don't even know what to pray. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you really think about this. He or she does not know how, for the earth yields crops by itself. This stuff works by itself. Come on. Come on. Itself. Yeah. It's alive. Thank you. Come on, this is, just set you free. Yeah. You don't know how this kingdom works. Yeah. It works by itself. It works by what you have to do is just believe you can get it up on you and let it work by itself. Come on. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Loose yeah. in the name of Jesus. Blue. Code word. Code blue, code red, you know, whatever. <laughs> the kingdom works by itself. This ought to set you free. Takes the pressure. Oh, brother, how do you do that? You just let it just come out of you. It knows what to do by itself. Yeah, it does. You don't know how this works. 
Get it out of your mind. How, brother, how's that work? Don't worry about how it works. Just get it out. Because it will do it by itself. This is a beautiful <laughs> message. This ought to set people free. That's, that's Have you ever heard works. it this way? This is the way it works. That is the way set it works. Set yourself free. Yeah. Just release that kingdom. Well, I don't know what to say. Release the kingdom. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Release the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Quit thinking about it. Release the kingdom. Yeah. It'll do it by itself. Yeah. It's designed to do what it's supposed to do by itself, and you don't know how it works. Grace. <laughs> I mean, this is cool stuff. But there's your part here. It's a new thing, but it's an old thing. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. Uh -huh. But when the grain ripens, immediately he or she puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Harvest you know when to do it because you're going to see the harvest. You'll see it. Oh, come on. Come on. You know, you could dumb noise or you'll go pick that bit. That's sure. not that easy. Yeah. So there's going to be low hanging fruit, high hanging fruit, yeah. and fruit all over. It's all over. But release that kingdom. Yes, yeah, you were talking about it. You, this is the master blueprint yes. of the kingdom of God. Yes, it is. We don't know how it works. You yes. just let it out. You just have to let it out. This is the secret to life. This is the secret into the unity. This is the secret into bearing fruit that will remain. It's a beautiful blueprint. So let's go over to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 6. My favorite is Chapter 3. Yeah, chapter 3. Chapter 3 is beautiful. Chapter 3, verse 14. I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken away. Amen. That ought to say you free right there. There you go. That's so what good. are people praying for? Are you praying, asking God to do something he's already done? Oh, this is a cycle of failure. This is a cycle of failure. <laughs> what could you actually ask God to add to it or take away from it? You can't add anything to it, and you can't take anything away from it. So this is the... The, the way people really get screwed up, I think, is they're praying and asking God to do things that he's already done. He would say this, I have already given you, already given you everything, everything that pertains to life and godliness. Yes, yes. Uh, everything. We yes. are in a finished work. We're like Adam. After the cross, it's not about us anymore. It's about him. He's done it all. Called, uh, he declared the end and the result from the beginning. Yeah. So what you got to do is you got to step into this by your belief system and start releasing that kingdom and just watch it work by itself. The, so how do you get a miracle? You just let him out. Yeah. How do you how do you, do you let him out? Well, what is what do you say? You let him out. Yeah. However you want to do it. You just let that kingdom out and you watch it work right in front of you. They break down. You get words of knowledge. You hear a snap, a muscle crack, blind eyes open, a lame walk. Yeah. How do you do it? You release him. This is a beautiful message. Really this is foundational good. message is of how to really good. set your mind free. Uh, Dave, are there different forms of releasing him? How, I mean, could you expound on that just a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. It depends on who you're trained by. Yeah. Okay. Um, Denny Hill would go touch. Yeah, some people do. Yeah. Dave Duell would go. Yeah. Dave Dalle with my Claudia Friesen. Tim Story might go like this. Yeah. Release, touch, whatever. But it's the intent of the heart. In other words, uh -huh. you're communing. The best way I can say this is, as Jesus was going to raise Lazarus from the dead, he started to groan in his spirit yeah. because he knows he's going into a major miracle and yeah. he's getting positioned. It's almost like an athlete anchoring yeah. back, putting the mantle over you. And go, I've seen this miracle before. I've raised somebody from the dead before. Yeah. And they're saying, you got to get pray for this guy. He's dead. And you're starting to pump up. You're, you're, you're getting filled with control by the Holy Spirit. You're groaning in your spirit because you know that once you release that kingdom, That's it's it. up to God. It's going to happen. But we're on the same page. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm the one releasing. They're, I, they're the they're, they're bringing me in. I'm the, I'm the big gun. But I've got a bigger gun behind me. That's right. I've got him. I've got the kingdom. Yeah. That's why I know it works. I have confidence in it because I've seen it before. Yeah. So however you want to do it, release, do, touch, calm, boom, bomb, 
kick. I had guys, and you know, I would just touch them with my side. Yeah. Fire would go into their body yeah. and slam yeah. this chair. Man, that fire went right into me. Dave Duell used to get me close to him. Just put all the anointing he could in me. Whoosh! I'll tell you what, we call that 440. I was getting yeah. some of those guys 440. <laughs> a massive amount of anointing that we yeah. could get out of my body. Yeah. Oil. Yeah. yeah. Massive. So, yeah. The last drop. <laughs> and there's no end to the anointing. I do well. What's so, that? So, so is is it a, a, a desire to release the God in you? Yeah. And yeah. and His power to do the work that you are asking Him to do, or that you envision Him doing. Right. He wants to do absolutely. It. So let's go over to. Um, let's go over to. 1 Samuel chapter 10. Okay. And I'm going to, we'll just close with this because um, this is becoming one of my favorite messages yeah. because it's so powerful. Yes, sir. Yeah. In the I desire or seek in no way to disrespect you. I'm sorry. I seek in no way to disrespect you, but I want to say this now. It's important if you don't mind. Sure. What about people that don't want it? I, I face them. Oh, people they, don't, they, don't want, they, don't want, they don't want nothing to do with the message. Well, I, what I would do is just dust your feet off and go find somebody that does. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah not everybody wants it. Not everybody wants it. Yeah. Hey, and we're somebody, out there. Somebody's very, very close to you. We can't yeah. force it. We yeah, not, force everybody, it. not everybody's in on it. can't force it. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, you know, that's not our job. Our job you is to find the people, like in my ministry, I'm picking out the people like that lady. I knew she was a player right from the beginning. Thank you. <laughs> She's a player. Not everybody's a player. There were three ladies up here. I called them the three musketeers. They're so far off, but the Holy Spirit still touched them. It's almost like the three stooges. They are so far off, and I know that, but I'm not God. But I released a measure. Maybe it took off a layer. Maybe they're one step closer to realizing maybe the next meeting or maybe all of a sudden the lady, oh my God, what that guy was saying is true. Maybe all of a sudden, maybe he changes them. Maybe he gave them a new heart. Maybe. It's possible. So our job is to keep releasing. It's his job to take them where they need to go. And, and we can't take credit for any of this. It's the beauty of it. What, Dave, what if you pray for them and they don't get healed? That is not my job. My job is to release it. It's his job to connect with them. Yeah. And it's at the appointed time of the Father. It's all under the guardian, the yeah. steward. It, this yeah. is all God yeah. stuff. It's God timing. But you kind of just believe that when you're yeah. in a meeting, when you start to release Him. Yeah. That's what we're doing. May I just, I better quit. May I just say something yeah, in regard to His question? Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible just tells us love your enemies, yeah. and then pray for those who despitefully use you and persecute you. And 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 I believe in those prayers with the love that they see, because sometimes that love is going to cause you to go the second mile. It's going to cause you to turn the cheek. It's going to cause you to, uh, you know, do things for them that'll like pour coals of fire upon their head mm -hmm. because they're going to see that you're loving them despite their hatefulness. I've crossed that line many times, and, brother. And and you keep crossing that line. And uh, sooner or later, it could be like the, like, the, like the Saul that became Paul. Because sooner or later, Jesus, I believe, is going to come knocking on their door in such a powerful way that they may, you know, fall from their horse. You know? Just believe God that he will. Yeah. You know? So are you talking about an unbeliever or a Thank believer? You. They consider themselves believers. Okay. Well, not you know. I, no, some people serious. some people say this. Well, I can't be like you. I don't want you to be like me. I want you to be the way God <coughs> has designed you. Yeah. But I have found that when we start releasing this anointing, hmm. because the Word of God is so true, that these things are going to start to happen to you, and I'm going to go through them because you can bank on this. This is the way it works. So the first thing that's going to happen. When this anointing, Samuel took the flask of oil, poured it on his head, and kissed him and said, Is this not because the Lord has anointed commander over his inheritance? So Samuel's praying for Saul. Yeah. And the first thing you're going to notice is 
when this anointing hits you, I don't care who you are, the Holy Spirit now has entrance yeah. to take you into your inheritance. Mm -hmm. But what is your her inheritance? It's the desires of your heart. It, and, and I think the desires of a person's heart can be multiplied and greater. And what happened to me was, I just started, oh God, I need more power. I, I, I started to get hungry. Yeah. And, and pretty soon, you know, we need the power of God. We need the Holy Spirit and the power of God. That's right. Because, like this, this is a ministry of demonstration. But I think everybody can demonstrate. And you'll see part of this deal is for everybody. So you're going you're gonna to step into your inheritance. So now it has the ability to start multiplying and adding things to your life. The second thing is here, um, the donkeys which went to look for had been found. You probably have to know the story. But the, first, the thing now is restoration is coming. So you're going to step into your hair, and the first thing most people is they need to be restored. There's something missing. There's healing. There's restoration. Only the Holy Spirit can heal the brokenhearted. That's what that anointing to do will heal the brokenhearted. You can come up to people, and women in these meetings, and say, "God, the anointing, the Holy Spirit can and will heal the brokenhearted." It's the only way to do it. He can heal. And how, if, you have a, if you're broken, you're going to start restoration. And then it said it's uh, in verse 3, you shall go on forward. So now this anointing is progressive. In other words, you're starting to move in, into the inheritance. You're starting restoration. Mm -hmm. And now it's progressive. Amen. You're starting to see some benefits. Yes. And you go, man, this is the way to go. I mean, yeah. And you start right. praying and you start desiring. And then all of a sudden you might be in a different meeting to, for somebody for a different impartation. You are going forward. There's no, there's no backward. There's, this anointing only goes forward. Yes. It, it's going to take you forward. It's going to yes. propel you. So I would say something to people. I said, yes. how do you really do what you do? Yes. Well, it's a gift. Mm -hmm. I'm working in a, in a major gift, major, major thing. Mm -hmm. Because the real Dave Dalbe, the old man, could never do this. So this is all giftings and callings and anointings that I have said yes to. Yes. And over the last 25 years, I've been investing my time in the Word of God and being where I'm supposed to be so that I can get in these situations to release Him because He now trusts me. I can go into deals and people will get healed. by I can just speak the Word and they get healed. I don't have to touch them. I don't have to do anything. But it's still that power and that Holy Spirit anointing yeah. it, and that yeah. kingdom that's upon me. And that yeah. kingdom sometimes can be, I don't know, 20, 30 feet, like Peter. Yeah. They would even put people out in the street just so his shadow might pass by. Yeah. you got to start thinking, when I go to the supermarket and I walk by somebody, I'm releasing power out of my body. Yeah. I'm going to yes. be like Peter one of these days. The Boom, okay. people in the supermarket, they fall over, they get healed, they don't even really, I don't, <laughs> I walk by, I don't, I don't need to take credit for it. They, they don't even know what hit them. Let God work with them. We don't know how this works. Let that kingdom happen. Oh, I'll tell you what. what I practice that. Yeah. Dave Joel taught me. I do too. We practice it. Yeah. Release that anointing. Do you walk by somebody with pain? Father, I just released that power on. Yes. Yes. Wouldn't it be great? All of a sudden they go, whoa, what, what, what happened? Boom! <laughs> go get the next one, right? We're on a roll. You're a young leader. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 4. And they will greet you and give you loaves of bread. Mm. Now the next thing that's going to happen is it's going to bring favor on you. Favor. Favor's coming toward you. You want favor. Jesus grew what? In, in favor, favor with God. In favor with men. Favor with God. In favor with men. This is God favor which is going to create men favor. You want favor. People are going to come up to you and do things that you can't believe they can do. They've done it to me. They walk up. Yes, favor. Boom. Favor. Amazing. How many want favor? Yeah. I do. Favor's beautiful. Oh, I love it. Favor just, favor just comes toward you. Yeah. This is part of this, a, a charisma anointing. The yeah. favor is yeah. part of this. It's, it's, it's coming. It's coming. Listen to me. It's coming. It's right yes. ahead of you. It's the progression. You're going forward, yeah. and the next step is favor. You're going to start to see favor. Yes. It's beautiful. This stuff is guaranteed. Because the word of God is like guaranteed. Yes. This is guaranteed. Yeah. If you will spend time and just say, yes, I believe this. It's coming your way. Yeah. It's right in your future. Yes. That's good. So listen to this. Verse 6. Yeah. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you and prophesy, and you will be turned into another man. 
Right. Now the change yes. comes. I'll take that. I'll take that too. Yeah. Amen. Did you hear that? Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. the actual movement of that charisma yeah. coming yeah. from favor. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're going to change it to the other person. This is the person we're looking for. This is the person that's going to arise from the prostration of life. Because now this anointing is getting you over the things that are holding you back. Amen. You're moving in progression. You're going forward. And all of a sudden, favor's coming. And now you're changed into a different person. And now you are a hitman for God. Because he's testing you in each one of these deals. Can you release me? Can you trust me? Then you start to see the miracles. You start to Amen. see devils come out of people. You can. Yeah, this is you. a powerful message. Yes. Yeah, it is. Eternal message. I just love this message. <laughs> because when I don't know how to say this, but this is the most powerful message, I think, in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is it. It's pretty this good. is all you need. The rest of it's going to be added unto you. you know, the gifts and the call, what, whatever. When you're changed into a different person. Can you imagine what that looks like? Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's wonderful. <laughs> the day happened to me. I was at the Father's house. Yeah. I came up to the pastor and I said, mm -hmm. I know you've seen me a little excited. Mm -hmm. But today, I've been waiting for a long time to mm -hmm. feel the atmosphere mm -hmm. in this That's place right. the way it is. I'm going to literally come unglued. Yep. Um, People came up, we've never seen anything like that before. Mm -hmm. You went to a different, I did go to a different level. The level was in me, but you've got to have people that can take the level. Apostle Paul says, I can't even tell you some of this stuff yet. Yep. That's why if you've got people waiting for five hours to get into your meeting, you just come out and go, boom, and the place <laughs> just lights on fire. On. Because they're all ready. Yeah. They're mountain climbers. They want it. They want you to, you, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. Yeah, I do. I want to get in the. I've been in a few of those meetings. Word of knowledge. Met them yeah. once. <clears throat> I took out the drill and I just yeah. did a little hard turn right here. Just like this. And then boom, it opened up. <laughs> and they're all slain in the spirit. Even the old ladies and the pretty old arms. I can't fall in the boom, they fall over. They're healed on the ground. I can't. No, this, you can. You can. Because I, I changed into a different guy. That's You're changing. The real Dave Dalby showed yeah. up. The one with the power. The real guy. There you ah. go. Yeah! Shandai. Amen. <laughs> so it was when he turned his back that God gave wow. him another heart. Wow. And those signs came to pass that very day. Yeah, they, that doesn't mean they, they started did. to operate, but they're on the inside of him permanently. Yeah. Ooh, this is yeah. good stuff. Yeah. This is good stuff. Yeah. <sighs> and then people are going to start noticing this. Yes, what sir. is this that has come upon the son of Kish? Mm -hmm. People are going to start to notice there's something different so about you because you are carrying total charisma. Mm -hmm. You're you walking in a realm of kingdom mm -hmm. with yep. love all over you. It's oozing out of you. Like I, people will say to me in business, I, need to, I don't know why I'm going to tell you this. I do. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And they tell me, why is that? It's that atmosphere of trust. Yeah. This charisma takes them into an atmosphere of trust, into kingdom. <coughs> and boom, all of a sudden, I said, man, when I touch your forehead, you are literally going oh, yeah. to feel the peace of God come on you. Mm -hmm. Because I carry that peace. Yep. Boom, I she's it. under the power. She goes, I feel peace. There it is. There it is. Take it was released on her. Thanks be to God that he's always going to take you into triumph for we are his trophies. Yes, we're his we trophies. Yes, we and are. through us he's going to spread and make evidence the knowledge of God every to us. Yeah. Because Amen. we're the sweet fragrance of the anointed one and his anointing exhaling unto God, which is discernible amongst those who are perishing and those who are being saved. That's right. It's discernible Amen. stuff. Amen. People are going to feel this. It's your another. charisma. Really? It's the charisma of God. It's the anointing of God. It's the kingdom bubbling out of you, Amen. making a radius. And you're going to bring people in. I don't know why I'm coming up to you, but boom, here you, you there, there's a reason. Boom, you, boom, boom, boom. Woo! You're working this stuff. They're drawn to it. That's a glory. It's beautiful. Yeah, they're drawn to it. They're drawn to it. Uh, and that's why, he, like Peter's shadow, yeah. just, you know, because oh, yeah. he was walking in that anointing yeah. all the time. He lived in the yeah. shadow of the Almighty. Yeah, yeah. Huh? He, yeah. Peter had inside, inside trader information. Peter, James, and John were at the Mount of Transfiguration when Elijah and Moses showed up with yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And they heard things. Oh, yeah. They heard these guys talking about the end time anointing. And Peter goes, Whoa. 
Can you imagine being yeah. in that same atmosphere of those guys? And Peter goes, oh, yeah. He just took it, man. He heard some things. And that's why this guy was so awesome. You see, he did, when he walked down the street, he didn't have to pray for you. He didn't have to anoint you with oil. He didn't have to do anything. He just had to let that kingdom out because it does it by itself. Yeah. So I'll say, yeah. Yeah. brother, yeah. should we anoint him with oil? Just bring the kingdom. Just, just bring brother, do you use oil? Bring the kingdom. Just bring the kingdom. <coughs> brother, what, brother what, do you fast Jesus, and pray? That's what Jesus would do. He just would bring him here. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah. fast and pray? No. Yeah. Fast and pray yeah. that you can learn how to bring the kingdom out. The kingdom comes out 24 hours a day. Kingdom. Yep. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Brother, I, <laughs> brother, did you did you fast and pray? No, I just had a hamburger. Why? Yeah. <laughs> this is not about fasting and praying. This is about the kingdom. The kingdom. Yeah. The kingdom works by itself. Yes. <laughs> I, this is great stuff. <laughs> this is great stuff. It is. This is great stuff. Amen. This is the greatest message in the Bible. Just set yourself word. free. It's a really good word. Just set yourself free. The whole book is I did, man. I, I've been Jesus working in this a long time. And the whole book is. Thank God. The Lord Jesus Christ. He is the word. <clears throat> well, the, the, the reason why I think one of you are saying this is the greatest measure, measure, message because, because it's the power of, of the Lord. It's the power of the kingdom. Right? You know, the, the message is, is, is void if it's without power. Right? So... You're, this is the demonstration that verifies the kingdom. Yeah. You know. yeah. Yes. This is it. This is the blueprint. You ever wanted a blueprint for your life? That's, this is that's, it. That's a good I would go study this blueprint. I'd yeah. get on whatever this is, and if you need to listen to it 20, 50 blueprint. times, yeah. listen to it finally, you go, you know, I think I start to believe this. I got that. You got to start believing this. I got it. Amen. Yep. Then you walk out of here, you can operate in it really quick. I'm a changed man. Amen. 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 Praise God. I have a lot of people come up to me and say, I listened to that CD you sent me. It changed my life. No, it's the Word of God that changed their life. But thanks be to God that I was the one who said it. Because I'm working in a gift. I'm working in the way God has called me. And this is my lane. I like this lane. I'm glad I chose this lane. I'm glad God chose me to be in this lane. Because I think this is the correct lane to be for the rest of your life. Because once you're in this lane, all the other lanes open up. And you have an awareness of them. But he says, as the occasion demands. I want you to keep saying that. Brother, I'm just, I'm just, I, I just don't know if I do. As the occasion demands. This anointing will come out. Of right. The word of the Lord. It doesn't matter what the occasion is. It might be a blind guy. It might be lame. So what if somebody came up to you in the supermarket? I, there's something different about, would you, would you pray, for, pray for my blind eye? No, let me call the pastor. No. As the occasion demands, you go, you, do you should do it. I'm glad you asked. Coach! Yeah. Put him! Eye opens. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. I mean, when they're coming towards you, God is sending them. Now you know that your antenna and your, your kingdom atmosphere is out there. I don't know why I'm going to tell you this. Who are you? These are all the yeah. code words that no, you've got right. them on the radar. You will do that every time. Yeah. Let me tell you one other little miracle story. Because I had a chiropractor with me, and I'm going to tell you about the miracle. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I was going to say, you're, you're walking in, in the knowledge of, of the kingdom and, and, and who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And you're you're walking with that expectation that 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 you're going to be releasing that that power yeah. to somebody oh, as yeah. you as you come into contact with them. That's right. right. I mean, you're ready. You're yeah. ready with expectation. Right. Right. So let me say this to you: <clears throat> the footsteps of the righteous are ordered. So let me just say something to you: not everybody's walking in the order footsteps. No, that's, right. Right. that's right. That's right. So you go out that front door, and you just you got worldly, you got mindly stuff. But if you go out that front door saying, "Father, God, what, what where would have? my footsteps lead me today yep. that I can release this kingdom to practice it?" Yes. He's going, "Ooh, I like that." Mm -hmm. And yep. pretty soon, yep. guess what? You're in a yep. kingdom encounter. Yeah. Yep. As opposed to just walking out the door. Well, you know, footsteps the righteous order. Well, maybe not your steps today. Maybe you've got to get in line with his steps. You're taking your steps. 
Yeah. Yeah. See how you can reverse this? Not everybody's walking in the right step. I pray that I'd be at the right place at the right time to meet the right people. Now that's a good prayer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To release the kingdom of God. Yeah. I'm looking for kingdom encounters. <clears throat> Safeway, Walmart, where, wherever you're at. Bank. Nothing at the bank. People just come up. People come up to me. This lady came up to your restaurant, <laughs> and she goes, "I overheard your conversation." <laughs> wow. Wow. I go, man, hang on to that chair. Fire! And she's yeah. like, shit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here we go. You overheard the conversation. You want to get close to this? I'll let it out. And you two can deal with the details. Right. I mean, there was a, a guy in a meeting. This was in a small church. He's over there like this. You, I need to pray for you. He says, I would not let you pray for me. Dude, listen, I don't know who you are. Get, get up here. I want to talk to you face to face. I can tell it. I'm standing there. Just, just tell me what the problem is. Well, I just got out of the drunk tank. My aunt told me I have to go to church. And so I'm here. I don't want to be in church. He says, but I kind of enjoy your meeting. <laughs> it's a little different. I said, I'm, he says, I just don't believe in God. I'm glad you just told me that. I'm going to ask my heavenly father to send fire to you two and work out the details. Fire! And the guy hit the deck. He's flopping like a fish. I go, this ought to be good. <laughs> Seriously, this guy gets up. He had a vision of God. And here's what he said. I want to get saved. Yep. That's all it took. <clears throat> Honest deal. I don't believe in God. I bypass that. You, sure. I'm going to send my yeah. heavenly father. Sure. It's in a kingdom. It's yeah. an anointing. You two can work out the details. Yeah. It's between you and God. Boom! Yeah. And I release yeah. it. He gets saved. Born again. Yeah. It's amazing. I get them in power. I get people born again in power. I don't walk up to them and, you know, brother, you know, you're a sinner. The power <laughs> takes them out. I've seen it so many times. Let the kingdom do it itself. Yes. Out of yes. their mouth, they will say the most amazing. Catholics will say, I, I want to get born again. Where did that come from? Yes. That is not in the Catholic language. I've heard it all. Yes. Kingdom, yes. kingdom, yes. kingdom. Yes. Leave here and study the kingdom and this anointing. Yes. Right. Doug, are you getting anything? Just what you just finished saying. Yes. Just get out of the way. Let it be directly from the Father to them instead of through our words because we're going to mess it up. Right. Yes. We don't know how yeah. it really works. We don't, we, we, it works. we don't know how this transaction yes. works. We've heard stories, yeah. but we don't know how it works. Put him with them. It's a beautiful thing. It takes, all, oh, it takes, yeah. it takes the pressure off. And let me tell you something. Great. When you start to see God do this, the kingdom do it by itself, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, just yeah. so easy. You'd be, I was in the airport. I was full of God. I looked down the lady next to me. She's got a built-up shoe. Senior citizen. We're waiting for the airplane. I go, God, what do you want to do about that? He goes, what are you going to do about it? Oh. Oh. He always do that. What am I going to do about it? Yeah. He always does that. Yeah. I was almost like sick to my stomach. Yeah, Two-inch built-up shoe. What do you mean? That's not good. <laughs> I mean, God, what are you going to do about it? So I wrap myself in my mantle, and I had a self-talk. I self-talk. Yeah. Look, dude, you get over there. You get into this miracle. You are anointed. Yeah. You've seen this before. Get yourself into that miracle now. Right That's what now. I told myself. I came up, touched. Hey, man, I'm in the miracle. Yeah, I had a pep talk. I had to talk with myself. I sure. said, you can do this. You have to do that. Yeah. Sometimes. And so I'm telling her, what happened? She goes, well, they did hip surgery and my, I'm missing bone. And so I got to wear the shoe and a clump around it. It's terrible. I said, well, I, I'd like to pray for you because uh, I've seen God heal people with legs like this. And, and what I'll need to do is get down, take your shoe off. I know it's a crowd airport. But when I see God, see God. lengthen your leg, I'll have you walk on it. She goes, are you for real? Yes. And my husband goes, I'd like to see that. <laughs> he's totally yeah. Yeah. He's got. I, he's like, this is like what some comedy act in an airport. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's there to and lose? All, huh? all of a sudden, I got down, and there's some guy <coughs> looked like Mr. IBM reading a book. And I, in the name of Jesus, and everybody goes, "Is Jesus there?" <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. And I didn't even see her leg around. Oh man, I missed it. That's why it says watching. So she gets up and she's walking perfectly. She goes, "Oh my God." Ma'am, God just healed you. She goes, that's impossible. No, all things are possible with God. 
Yeah. So I got to counteract her negativity. Oh, yeah. And pretty soon I said, don't ever put that shoe on again. She said, oh. Then they called us for an airplane. She's walking to the airplane totally healed in the airport. And I went to my plane like, God, that was awesome. Yes. Yeah. He yeah. says, hey, thanks. Yeah, thank Go to your you natural, man. <laughs> you just released me. I did the work. Yeah. I just had to get you out of the fog thinking, God, what are you going to do? <laughs> David, listen. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. So eventually you'll yeah. you'll be in these encounters where nothing's going to stop you. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. Do I do that all the time? No. Sometimes no, I just no. check it out. I saw a lady in a wheelchair the other day, and I go, Dave, I should be over there. You know how to do this. I should be holding this lady's hand and just moving into this miracle and just say this: When you feel the strength from the place, I just want you to stand up. And I check Crazy. it out. I check it out. Yeah, I chickened out. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, yeah. if I well, you're not alone, leave me share a comment on that. You know, I think the reason we <clears throat> we do chicken out at times is because we're not really focused. At least, you know, I'll speak for myself, and we've not spent that time in preparation before God, and and we're not ready. You, you know, the, the scripture came to me at the beginning of the meeting. No, no, no soldier. Uh, uh, of, of, how does that scripture go? No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has called him to be a soldier. Right. When you enter into the military, you you're you're their possession now, yeah. and you don't you don't. Yeah, you don't know, you don't own anything. You don't, you know, you're you're just totally focused right. on preparing yourself as a soldier and, and and winning the battle and coming home alive. And and if we would focus like that on the kingdom of God, right. yeah, we would be ready instant in season and out of season. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stay pumped. You gotta stay, gotta pumped. stay pumped. I told somebody the other day, I'm I'm pumped again. Things are oh, well, Praise yeah. God. Yeah. I see it. <coughs> I see it. You know, I don't know. There was a time where I hung around people and they just talk you out of it. And oh, people yeah. who are negative and, you know, not to say anything against my beautiful ex wife, who's a very godly yeah. woman. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, people close to you can just, you know, harp yeah. you down and, you know, yeah. uh, just it takes a toll on you. So, praise God, I'm pumped. <laughs> right. I'm just yeah. pumped. Amen. So why don't everybody just raise your hands and I'm going to release this Thank corporately you. into you. Yes. And I'm telling you what, yep. the kingdom of God is going to come into you yep. and this anointing that's on me is going to come into your body by the power Praise of the Holy the Spirit yes. and you're going to move in these realms, you're going to start moving yep. into the inheritance, you're going to yes. move in to favor and progression. Favor. You're going to be changed. This is all Change. going to go inside of you yeah. along with the spirit of wisdom yeah. and of revelation yeah. into the knowledge him. Father says, I'm going to grant you that spirit of wisdom and revelation. Amen. And I'm also Amen. going to release. He is able to make all grace abound. And that grace is abounding in, in the sound of my voice. And that grace is going to come into you. And that grace, when yeah. great grace comes into you, you're going to move great. in great power. So, Father, I'm just going to release this anointing on everybody Thank in here. Shah! You got it. Glory! Power! Power! You could bank on that one. Fire! Bless you, Bless you brother. You can thank you. The word of God is true. Praise, Praise God. Lord. Praise God.